This program is intended for mature audiences. Parental discretion is advised. Hey, what's up, guys? I'm your host, Bird, and welcome to another exciting episode of Real Vivid TV. Today, we interview two former NFL pro players right here from the 805. And stay tuned at the end because you don't want to miss a sneak peek of our next episode. This is Real Vivid. What's up guys, this is Real Vivid TV. We're here with Ronnie and Lorenzo, former NFL stars, and today we're gonna conduct a quick interview with them and uh, just get to know them a little. Hey, I'm Lorenzo Booker uh, from Port Wayne, born and raised with the same bond adventure, Florida State, and then played uh, six years in, the, in professional yes. football. Ronnie Jenkins, I'm from Oxnard, California. I'm from the great Wayne High School, on to BYU, on to the professional level, which is here supporting. So tell me guys, a little more, um, how does it feel growing up in a place like this and just uh, advancing so far, you know, just joining the NFL, you know, was it overwhelming or, you know, was it exciting? Well, I mean, I, I came up after him, so it was a little different for me because I was able to have somebody that I could see, so I knew how to work, I knew what I had to do to get there, and so I feel like it was a little easier for me because when you have somebody in your backyard that's doing it. You know, it gives you the confidence, okay, well, it's not, it's, it doesn't require, you know, some crazy, you know, situation to get you there. If you work hard, if you got the ability to keep your head on straight, then, you know, you could get there too. So, you know, I remember exactly where I was at when he rushed for 600 yards. I remember exactly where I was at when he was doing his thing at BYU and then in the, in the, in the pros. So, I always had something to chase. You know, so for me, I feel like it was a lot easier than it was for him. Not to say that it's easier to get there, but, you know, when you got somebody that not only was I was watching him, but he was always talking to me periodically, making sure I was doing what I was supposed to do. So I kind of had a little bit more help than he did, you know. Yeah. And for me, it's just, uh, you know, I was lucky to find something uh, at a young age that I was really good at and really fell in love with. Uh, you know, it's always distractions, you know what I'm saying? So, um, and for whatever reason, I was addicted to success. You know, I, I wanted to be great. I wanted to be really good at what, what I was doing. So, and I have people in my corner, my uncle, uh, my grandmother, who, you know, basically installed, instilled in me what it takes to, to, be, to be good, to be great. And uh, I just listened. I, I watched and learned uh, from people on television, just, you know, how they did things and it was just really in me just to, to, to work hard and not really focus on anything. I, you know, I'll focus on other little, other little things but for the most part I was focused on my craft and my sport and I knew I wanted to be a professional football player one day so I would have to do that. Nice. And uh, what are some obstacles you guys went through? You know, is there anything crazy you guys went through going through that? You know, or just even just growing up around here? Well, it's always, there's always distraction, um, you know. I, uh, the, the area I was in in Port Wainimi was, it was very, very like, um, it was a small area, it's kind of like a beach town down by Seaview, so, and I pretty much stayed in that pocket, so the group of people that I was around in terms of my friends, you know, my best friend DJ, and my brother and sister always kept me straight. Um, you know, so Derek lived a few doors down, so, um, but like he said, he had his uncle Duke, you know, my cousin Curtis was, Always making sure I got my workouts done, making sure I stayed focused, making sure, make sure that I understood that, look, if you want to do something no one's ever done, then you have to do things that they're not willing to do. And so, you know, it's just keeping your mind on, on the task at hand. Um, there's always going to be distractions. You're going to have to, you know, 
distance yourself from certain people. And then there's other people you want to flock towards because like minds, you know, want to roll together. So, um, you know, there's always going to be something in the way. But it's like, you know, do you want to be the person that said I shoulda, coulda, woulda? Or do you want to be the person that says I did it? You know, so. Exactly. With me, you know, growing up in South Oxnard, you know, I saw a lot of stuff. Uh, I was around a lot of stuff. Uh, from my family to my, my friends. Uh, so it was tempting to get involved in certain things. But again, like I said, I was real focused on my sport, right? Yeah. And that's why I said I'm lucky that I found it quick and I fell in love with it quick because, you know, when you're young and you're, you're influenced by, by people or whatever, you could stray, you know what I'm saying? So I was lucky. Uh, coming from where I came from and seeing the things that I've seen and being around uh, my people, my friends and stuff that, that unfortunately may have went the other way, you know what I'm saying? So I was lucky to have something and find something quick in my life that I was in love with so I didn't have to, you know, be tempted to go to the, to the other side. And a lot of my friends love me and respect me because of that, you know, and they tell me that. So um, I could give you a bunch of different stories on some struggles, but the bottom line is, we all have them, and it's, it's not really a struggle, it's how you get through it, so yeah. um, that's how I look at it. So, um, was there struggles? Absolutely. But uh, we, we, we more focus on the end result. We don't focus on the beginning, we focus on the end. And at the end, we, we hear what we, we, we right here, you know what I'm saying? Doing exactly. what we're doing. And my final question for you guys would be, do you have any um, advice for people that are local, upcoming businesses, or even music artists out there, you know, any piece of advice you'd like to give them? I mean, I would just say, you know, people who tell you you can't do it or, or bring negativity is because they're projecting their own limitations on you. You know, it's like Russell Westbrook says, it's only crazy until somebody does it, right? Yeah. You know, why not? So, um, you know, at the end of the day, no matter how, I feel like if the dream or the goal isn't outlandish, then you're not dreaming big enough. And that's just the truth. You know, he, he was able to do things that a person who thinks normally would say, you'll never rush for 700 yards in a game. You'll never lead the team, lead a top five in the nation team in touchdowns as soon as you get there. You'll never own records with the Chargers that still stand today and your picture is still in there today. So if you don't dream big enough, then, you know, how do you, if you don't believe, who else will? You know, so for me, coming up seeing that, being ranked number one in the nation was something that I clearly felt was reasonable. You know, finishing number one in career rushing statistics was reasonable. You know, so um, I just feel like, you know, don't let the detractors get in the way. The naysayers, they're there for a reason. They're there to motivate you. They're there to remind you of how not to think. And just to, just to piggyback on what he said, um, the best advice that I can possibly give anyone is, is find your passion. Find what you really want to do. Uh, not be a trend and go with what you think you should do or, or chase the dollar. Just find something that you can do that's really going to make you happy and not stress over over money, right? Not saying stay away from money, but just saying focus on what you really want to do. If it's something that happens to make you a lot of money, cool. But if it's something that you could just, you know, you wake up and you're happy to go to work, happy to go to train or happy to go play football, basketball, whatever you're gonna do, find your passion. And not let anyone distract you because no one's gonna feel good like you do. Uh, we've, we've heard negative stuff all our lives. You, know you can't do this, you're too small to do that, you ain't fast enough, you're gonna be faster. And the more I learned, the more I learned that that just wasn't true. Because everywhere I went, I saw a difference, which gave me confidence to keep wanting to be great. You know what I'm saying? If you don't want to, if you don't want to be great, you ain't going to be great. If you don't want to be successful, you ain't going to be successful. You got to be addicted to positivity. You got to be addicted to being successful. And success is all relative. You know, we're, don't, don't look at us like we, you have to do what we do. Find what you want to do and be successful at that. And that's that. Well, we thank you guys so much for your time. We really appreciate this. And, you know, um, we hope to hear a lot more from you guys. We're going to stick around and, and hang out here and, you know, also try the food as well with you guys. And, um, yeah, oh, heck yeah. Well, we're glad to hear that. And 
like I said, guys, this is Real Vivid TV, and uh, thank you all for tuning in and check us out.